Hi there and welcome to Darlene's Creative Studio. I am working on the 100 day project on Instagram and my Instagram account is darlene.mcconaughey and I posted that I was starting um, by creating ephemera from my stash of book pages and the many 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 piles that I have. I'm trying to, what I'm doing is I'm clearing out a whole shelf and I'm stacking it on my work surface on one end and then I'm picking two or three of the piles and I'm actually trying to use up if I have a little bit of something I'm trying to use that little bit up and make something out of it and get it out of the way so that's kind of what I'm planning on doing for my 100 day project is just building my ephemera stash and then along the way I will be actually putting some journals together as well so I'm just going to show you a couple of the small things that I've pulled out of that pile of papers that I showed on my Instagram photo um, on the 31st. One of the things that I have is, and this is this is all I have, it's just a few little pieces of paper. This is packing paper that I've received in a shipping box. And normally it's craft colored, but this is actually white and it's very crinkly. And I didn't want to throw it away, so I kept it, and I thought, what can I make out of this? Again, I only have two small pieces of it, so um, I have these little bags that um, I use. I think these were hold your utensils at some of the restaurants, and it's just a little long pouch, and I cut them into smaller things and make these little tiny things. And I like this size of a little pouch only because if I make a tag or something, and I want to send a thank you gift when someone places an order or when I do a swap or whatever, I like to stick some of the smaller things in these little bags. And I just love the sound of the crinkly paper. So this is just a sample of one of those long bags, but I thought, why not try and make some little bags out of this paper rather than throw it away? So this is approximately the size. I normally make about a three inch and it's about two and three quarters wide. So I only need um, two and three quarters and two and three quarters is five and a half. So I'm gonna say maybe six and a quarter wide. So all I'm gonna do is take this paper and cut it six and a quarter wide and that will be my fold over. And I should be able to get two of them if I cut this in half and then do six and a quarter and six and a quarter. Maybe this is six and a quarter, not six and a quarter. Um, but I'm just going to cut these and maybe get two out of each one. So if I cut this in half, like that, that'll be my half. So that'll be about the, the, the length of it. And then I just need to cut them into, again, I need the whole width. So maybe just cut this in half and I'll get four, four envelopes out of these little scrap pieces of paper. And then I also have this piece here. This is a piece that they cut across. Same thing, I'm just going to cut this straight across, cut it in half and I'll get two more. So I'll get six out of this scrap paper that I was gonna throw in the garbage. So there's one little project. I'm not gonna do it on camera because I, what I'm gonna do is um, just, these are some of the projects I can work on while I'm watching TV or just sitting around with my husband. Um, so there's one little project there. Then another one is um, I have these 12 by 12 pieces of scrapbooking paper and this is the thin stuff. This is not cardstock, this is the thinner paper and it's white on one side and colored on the other. And what I was doing, I was taking my 12 by 12s and I was cutting them down to 8.5 by 11 so I could put them through my printer and print something on the other side of the paper and or tea stain them and use them in my journals. Um, so these are the cutoffs of that. So this is the eight and a half, nine, so three and a half inches probably is what this is left over. And I have quite a stack of it because I was doing a lot of those papers and then just tea staining them. So I thought, you know, I've got this little stack to do something with. So I thought I'd make some of these little corner pop outs. Um, I saw this on YouTube or in uh, Instagram maybe, I'm not sure which one. Um, a lady was making them, but she sticks them inside of a little pocket or she glues them down to the corner of your journal page. I'm just gonna flip this over so you can see it. So you should glues this down and then what happens is you just open it up and you've got a little journaling space. Um, the only thing with things that pop up or fold out, I find in journals, um, you know how people have things where you open it up and it folds down all, all these little flip outs and everything. I like them to actually fold out or flip out onto the journaling page. So if this is the page of my journal, 
and I'm going to place it somewhere so that when it opens up it's actually on the journaling page because if you have it flip out like this then you have it hanging off and it's really difficult to write on especially if this is like the middle of your journal and you have a big drop here or something it just makes it more difficult to write on so when you make little pop-ups or flip outs remember to take into consideration that when this thing flips out or opens up or you know, when you've got it as a trifold or something, when it flips up and it hangs out over the journal, it's going to make it harder for the person to write on or do whatever it is they're going to do on it. Um, so when you have your flip outs, kind of make sure that they flip out either onto the next page or within that page so that they're not hanging off of your journaling page. Um, learn that the hard way. So these are just going to be tiny ones because the paper is only three and a half inches. So all you do is cut a completely perfect square and then you can make these little flip outs and these are nice because you can make a little corner pocket or you could have you know some kind of a little pocket with and then add a little tiny corner on there and tuck these in there and then when you want to open it you just have to pull that piece out and leave this corner tucked in underneath so you still need to tuck it under something to hold it closed because it'll pop open or you can make some kind of a closure but I'm going to make a couple of these and insert those in, in um, some of my journals. I do include you know, dictionary pages or music book pages or something like that in my journals. And I normally have a pocket or something on them. I don't consider them writing pages. Um, so I might include a couple of these little just on the corner so that people can pop, pop them open and write some little secret messages and stuff in there. So I do have some of these that I'm just going to cut into if this is a see so this is say three and a quarter I'm just going to cut it into three and a quarter by three and a quarter and then you just fold it actually let's do one real quick these are really 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 easy to make and you can make them in all different sizes you can make them in, in larger sizes I'm just using up these scraps that I have and I thought they'd be nice little things that you can tuck in somewhere and, and people can put them wherever they like so literally you just have to have a square piece of paper and you're going to fold it in half one way so there's in half one way with the lady then you're going to fold it in half the other way so that gives you your di um, your lines like that so there it's in half and in half and then you just fold them on diagonals both ways so this way and you make sure that it's even that way and then oops, make sure I do it right here that way so you're going to end up with kind of a little starburst in the middle these are like I say super super easy to make so there you end up with your cross and then your diagonals and then really all you have to do is you want to have one little corner square like that so I just make sure I I choose whatever square I want and I like the butterfly so that'll be at the top so you just pinch it close like that and then push this one down so that it makes a little so you're more or less tucking two two corners in to the center like that and then squeezing it close but so there's a nice little so this one can be on this side if I want the butterfly showing like that or it can go on this side with the lady showing oh no it's got to be this way and the lady sideways so I'm going to definitely have it so that the butterfly is showing and then they just open up so these are again nice to tuck in a corner nice to tuck in a pocket um, but a good way to use up these scraps the other thing I'm going to try and I'm not a ruffly person I don't include a lot of ruffles in my um, books but I did do some accordion folding to create like a little ruffle and then you just sew these and you can have these on the edges of your pages or on the edges of your pockets um, you just sew the cross with the sewing machine and then cut them into strips and you can have them on edges or you can use them as tabs so they would be hanging off of the edge of your book and that would be a tab on the edge of your journals so um, what I did for these ones I was trying to figure out the best width so that I could get more out of the paper so these were a half an inch and a quarter inch and it took one of these long strips which is 12 inches and it only made this little tiny piece <laughs> so this one I did it I'm pretty sure it was half an inch, three quarters of an inch and then a quarter inch scoring it and then if you do your little accordion folding and again it's harder to do because you have to really sew it to to see what it looks like you get a lot more out of your page if you have a less uh, smaller little fold underneath so then you would sew with your sewing machine up there 
up one side. I, you could probably get three strips out of this because I wouldn't want them very wide. And then again, it can go along the edge of your book or use it as a tab or whatever. So I might, I don't do a lot of pink, so I was just testing them on the pinks, but I would definitely um, take some of these browns that I like to use for my tea stained journals. And hopefully some of these words would disappear, but, and then I would have that as a little tab on the side. So those are some of the things I'm making out of those scrap pages. And maybe some little tiny mini envelopes. I'm not sure yet. I haven't got that far. Um, I also um, tore apart a, I think it was a family history book. It um, was at a thrift store for a dollar. And I like it because it has a lot of the lines in it that you can fill in the blanks. And I like to use those um, on the back of my journaling cards. Or if there's a lot of lines, I will actually fold them up and use them in my journals as a page. Um, but I love the paper. It's almost like sketchbook paper. And whenever I come across any end papers in a book or any papers in um, another kind of book, I like to keep the papers that are nice and thick like this, like that sketchbook thickness. Um, they, these are great and what I'm going to do with these because they're nice and thick and they're white pretty much Not that one um, All around these were like their title pages. I'm going to um, stamp these with some of my stamps and make some labels So I will probably take out that stamp um, And that stamp And I think I have like a little square one as well. And I'm just going to sit while I'm watching TV and stamp all over these. I use up all the little scraps I can. I'll try and get around the whole outside of this. And I just use up, um, create some, some labels out of that. So that's one other little thing that I do. And these were just little scraps that I found. Um, so what I look for is, so this is an example. This is an atlas that I got from a thrift store and I think it was like $2. Um, and I, again, there's a nice thick, heavy, really thick end paper. So I would keep this and use this for a project or even insert it as a page in my journal because it's nice and thick and you can use it. Um, and then title pages, if it's got a lot of white on it, I would stamp on this and use it for labels. But I like the atlases. They're not shiny. So this is a matte um, paper and it's it's thick like that sketchbook paper, construction paper. It's thick and, and matte colored. So I will be able to use these. Um, to make envelopes or whatever pouches um, pages but I love in the back of these books all of these index pages they're just like the um, list of abbreviations the cities um, it tells you where the maps are and that kind of thing I love these pages these pages can be tea stained and then you have all these little words on them and you can use them in your journals. You can also cut these down to the size that will fit in your printer and print something on them. So um, I've done like an old vintage map on top of these. And so in the background, you'll have word pages. And then I would use them as like a cover in my signature. So on one side of the book page will be tea stain and then I'll have like the map or something on this side. So I like these pages because they're nice and thick and they go through your printer really well. Um, and you can do stuff on these. Like I can make these into envelopes. These are nice and sturdy for envelopes. So whenever I see an atlas that's about a dollar, I look in the back to see A, how tall the atlas is, because the tall pages make great bifolds and you know pockets and all that kind of thing. Um, but I also look for that paper that's nice and thick and the matte paper, not the shiny paper or the glossy paper. I, I don't use a lot of the glossy papers. Um, so these maps I can use, again, for envelopes or pouches or whatever. So this is one of the books that I have kept. Um, and again, I will rip out that last page and use it in a journal. I save all the end pages if they're nice and thick. So that's kind of what I've been doing is um, just finding those odds and sod little pieces and working on them. So I pick about three or four little projects and I have this little tray and I pull this tray out and I put them in there and all the supplies I need. And if I'm sitting watching TV or I'm watching a video on a YouTube video or something, I'll be sitting there doing a project. Um, another one is these, these were some of those little flower books, um, little tiny ones. And I cut all the pages out. They're nice and yellowy color compared to some of these white ones, but I'm going to fussy cut the flowers out because I want to be able to use these when I do um, some snippet, I'm going to do some more snippet rolls, or if I'm going to be doing some collaging, I want to be able to stick that size of a flower on top instead of that size 
with the white all around. So I'm going to sit with my scissors and my little tray and I'll just cut around these and leave some of the white there and maybe you could distress the edges. But I want to have some smaller flowers that I can add to my snippet rolls that I'm going to make. So that's another little project I'll be working on is snippet rolls. So I have this little, little pile of flowers. And again, if they're smaller, um, some of these, if you want, you can even... Uh, get a square punch and I could even cut that flower out and put that inside one of my postage stamps because I have a postage stamp um, punch and I can punch it and put that inside so I have a little square that fits inside that so even some of these might look nice as postage stamps so I'll kind of as I'm going through them I'll I'll have my square punch kind of on that tray and I'll look at them and think hmm will that look nice as a postage stamp or should I just fussy cut it out and add it to a page or a cluster or something like that. So that's kind of what I work on, these little projects. And I try and pull them out so that I have things to work on so I can get this little bit of stuff. And then once I have all these done, they'll go into a nice little envelope and I'm gonna get a little box and have them so that when I'm working on a cluster, I'm just gonna pull the box out and have all these little things cut out. So that's some of the things that I'm gonna be working on this week. And then these are all the end papers I've been talking about. Uh, whenever I rip apart a book or especially the ones that are falling apart. I like to keep, look at that tape, look how old it looks. So I like to save the end papers. These make great for stamping with my stamps to make labels because they're very aged. Um, sometimes they're too crispy to fold for envelopes or anything like that or even put in a book because when you fold it, it kind of um, breaks a little bit. So some of these, when they're really, really old, I love to make la my labels out of them. And I will probably do um, some red and blue ones as well, not just black ones, uh, but that's also, so I save some of these for that type of thing. This one's really thin, but it's very old. You can feel how old it is. So again, it will make a nice label and or look at the age the color in that one but it's a little shiny on the back it's not so much on the front but these are just some look at that one all aged so this might make a nice ticket if I stamp a, a, a ticket on there and then cut out this ticket it looks nice and aged and you can use it for a ticket so I kind of go through these and find the end papers that I like to save for and what I'm going to use them for there's a whole bunch of them here that are nicely aged and then I get into the ones that are colored and again, these can be used for tickets. These ones are nice and matte color. They're not shiny, so I can use these for some brightly colored tickets. There's a brown one. Or tabs, if it's thick enough. I can cut tabs out of um, these for the edges of my journals. But I don't like to use solid colors too much for the, um, for the tabs. So those are just some of the end papers that I've come across. This one has all the lines in it. So that would be kind of cool. That one actually might even be nice in a book that's not that old. So that could go in a journal. So if that was something I would use in a journal, I have a stack of papers that I keep separate for putting inside journals. So this is the kind of stuff I'm going through, making a stack of papers that are gonna go in journals um, that aren't too crispy and old. And I'm afraid that they're gonna break. This is handmade paper. How nice and soft that is, or origami paper. Ooh, these are nice papers. So even something like this could go inside of a journal, just a little tiny piece. So again, sorting through all of these, and making the piles of say tickets and or papers for journals and or I'm gonna stamp on those or make tabs out of those. That's kind of what I'm trying to do is separate them. If they're sitting on a shelf in a big pile, I forget they're there. And then I think, oh, you know, what can I work on now? So that's something that you really have to sort through and instead of having piles and piles and piles of paper, why not work on a couple of things at a time? There's also, I have all these music books and I saw this on, and I'm gonna try and remember, if I remember, I'll add it to the video. Um, there's a lady that, that I came across and she just takes all of her old music books and she leaves them intact. So let's say for this one, she leaves them intact. And then what she does is she gets some tissue. She um, gets a napkin and or tissue paper and she decoupages the page right in the book. So safe for this one because it's not a like the bird nests. She will just take these and she will decoupage it right into the music book. And then when she's working on um, book pages or a collage or decorating an envelope or a pouch or something like that, she can literally rip the book page out 
and cut it down to size for what she needs and then she'll have some scraps as well but this is how she keeps them intact by actually keeping the book together and actually decoupaging the pages so I've got this tissue paper I thought that would be kind of cool. So it's really nice once you decoupage, you get to see the music paper come through the background and then you get that layered collage look. So those are some of the things that I'm also going to be working on. So I've picked about six or seven projects, some that I can work on when I'm watching TV. And this is one that I will be sitting doing in my studio. So that's what I was trying to do is pick, you know, three or four projects that I could work on in a day. Um, and then some that I can work on at night. I love to buy the piano music books because there's no words. And so you just get the musical notes and that looks really, really nice behind. This one has words in it, but it looks really, really nice behind when you're collaging. So even when you're doing, well, maybe not a, a busy napkin like this, but you'll see the music, the music notes behind once you decoupage it. Let me just try and find a wider piece. See, you'll see the music pages behind it so it kind of pops out and it looks like you've collaged it and then you can add more things to it if you like on top of it uh, but this one's a really busy one I probably wouldn't need to add too much more to it I have a whole stack of uh, a basket and it has all my tissue papers in it so there's all kinds of tissue papers and then all of my napkins in here so that's kind of what I would use to decoupage some of those music book pages. So I've got, they're mostly all florally ones, but that's, I would just go through and do maybe two or three of each in a music book and have one whole music book as just decoupage napkins. And then, then I've got that if I need to pull it out to do um, decorating an envelope or something like that, at least I've got them already done. So. Those are a few projects that I'm going to work on. And then um, today I'm going to start on the music book. And then the other ones I'll just be working on. So th those are some of the posts that you'll see over the next couple of days of um, projects that I'm working on. I hope that it gives you some inspiration to try a few things. Um, I also have this paper. Oops. I want to sting. Wait a minute. <laughs> So this is the Tim Holtz, and look at that, it's cut perfectly for the page. So once you wet it, it gets a little thinner, so you'd have all of that music page behind, as well as your tissue paper, and then that would be the base of your collage, or a bag, if you cut this and fold it, you'll make a nice little bag or something like that, but that's kind of what I'm going to work on. Use up some of the napkins that I have, because I really don't use them for anything else other than decoupage, so I'm just going to take some of these old music books that I have, all these single ones that I probably won't use for anything else and I'm just going to pick one or two of them in collage. So so that's it. I just wanted to share with you a few of the projects that I'm going to start and I say on Instagram I will be posting my 100 day project. I will post a few of the photos as I go through the next couple of days. Um, and then as I work on something, if I actually make all those little envelopes or that type of thing, I'll turn my video on. So if I make those envelopes later this afternoon, I'll turn my video on and I'll add it to this video. But that's kind of what I'm working on. So that's it for today. I just wanted to share with you some of the projects and how I'm building up my ephemera stash. Thanks so much for watching. See you real soon. Bye for now. So I am working on that scrap paper, that scrap packaging paper. And it was... This was the, the width of the packaging of one piece. So I just folded it in half this way. And then I cut two six inch pieces and this is a little bit that's left over. So I'll take that out to So I have two of those. And then this was the long piece with the jaggedy edge that was cut. I just cut this to the same height. So this height, when you folded it in half, was four and a quarter. I've cut it to four and a quarter. So I'm just going to cut this one off. So both of these, now I'll cut this to six inches. Let's put that on my cutter here. Six inches. There we go. So there is a six by four and a quarter. And these are four and a quarter. I'm just going to cut them in half like 
that. So this is a great way to re, you know, use up some of those scraps. It's better to think of a project you can use them for rather than saving a great big box of the stuff and having it sit on your shelf for ages. Um, cut it into more, like sit down and just cut it into this size even and then maybe spend an afternoon and making them into little, little pouches afterwards. But it's so much better than having these pieces. I had them shoved underneath a table I kept thinking, I'm going to do something with those. I'm going to do something with those. So now I'm actually doing something with those <laughs> rather than waiting. Um, so this is, and I'm just using this as my sample. So two and a three quarters is where I'm going to fold it. And I'm just eyeballing it here. It does not have to be perfect like that. And then this piece is going to fold over. You're just kind of making a little mark and I'm going to make it fold against the bottom there and then fold it up so that when I fold this over I have that little lip to glue it to like that and then what I think I'm going to do is because this had like a perforated edge where you rip the pages apart I'm going to leave that as the top of the bag right so let's turn this in just a smidge more like that, so that when we fold this over, yeah, I don't want this too much to show show too much. So I think I'm gonna do it that way and then just fold it over at the back. Yeah, because that's gonna be the front, right? So you don't want to see that little fold. So it's probably just easier to fold it over that edge like that. Now, I'm gonna cut this front piece down and I'm gonna cut it to, this is what I say, four and a quarter. Let's cut it down to three and a half. So I'm just gonna grab a pencil here. And I'm just gonna make a little mark like that. So when we open it up, we're gonna cut down there and cut across the three and a half the front of my little bag. So now when I fold it over, and again, I always play with the first one, kind of get it where everything, where I want everything. So I'm going to have a little back piece and then this is cut off. And then for the bottom, I'm just going to flip this up about, I'm going to say not even half an inch, half an inch. And the same thing, I'm going to cut this little corner off at a slight angle, there, and, on, the front piece. and the back piece off, off the longest piece. So you want to leave the center, and you want to do it on a little angle there. Okay, so literally when you close this up and glue that down, and fold that up so all your little edges are on the back of the envelope and then you've got this so let's glue this and then I'll show you how to finish it up and again this is just a winging it kind of thing but okay so we're gonna glue the flap down glue the flap up on the bottom like that and then I'm just going to trim this little part off the edge. So then I'm just going to round the edges like that. So there. I've got a nice little pouch. And you can make them exactly the same by just bending it. Don't fold it, but just bend it. <laughs> got the paper stuck to my scissors. There. So there, now you have your little pocket made out of your scraps packaging paper and it's a nice crumbly, crispy sounding envelope. And that's a nice size that I can stick a tag in there maybe, um, or some postage stamps or something like that with a little thank you, or I can collage on the front with one of those um, flowers, that the fussy cutting that I'm doing. Um, 
once I start decorating them or something, I can use some of these fussy cuts. And you can add that onto the front once you start collaging it. So there's there's a good way to use up the scraps. Um, by all means, I don't say to people, like, save absolutely everything that you get, <laughs> you get. Yeah, in the mail. If I did, my whole workshop studio would be filled with stuff. But when I come across something that's different and unique and I can see something, as soon as I pulled it out of the box, I knew I could make these into these little these little pockets um, so I did save it and I haven't come across this color anywhere else I do get the craft quite a bit and I have made some little envelopes out of the craft um, the craft packing paper I did make these little pouches and this is out of the craft one and again I have a, a big stack of it and it's just it's the thin paper it's the packing paper and I just stamped it with my mushroom stamp so you can use some of that packing. The only problem is if you save it and it sits on a shelf, it doesn't get used. So if you're going to save it, make sure you have a project in mind and actually do the project <laughs> so you don't end up being a hoarder. Um, and then I just get these little, these little um, canvas bins from, these were from the dollar store and they were folded all up like this. It's a collapsible storage container and they're 11 by 5 inches by 4.75 inches and they have a little handle on the front and I just added on the bottom they come with a little hard piece that you put in the bottom um, but I also I find if they're too flimsy I put a piece of I get some old game boards when I you was collecting all the game cards I'd cut a piece of the game board and I put it underneath before I put the inside down so that when I pick it up it's sturdier than and it won't collapse uh, but these are great for holding all my little bits and pieces and I just made one tall tower of my um, studio I've made the shelves really skinny and I just slide those all in there so I these are great these were um, I think they were from the Dollar Tree and they were a dollar each um, they have larger or higher ones but so that's what I suggest if you are going to save stuff make sure you use it don't just stack it in a bin and put it somewhere and say I'm going to use that someday um, this is the whole purpose of my purging my stash is that I want to have all that stuff ready and done and use it not have piles and piles and piles and piles of paper everywhere so I'm going to continue on making these little envelopes and um, if I do anything else if I do the decoupaging of the pa music papers later on I will turn my camera on as well thanks so much for watching bye now so here's a quick update I have finished the little bags from the packing paper um, I did use see they're nice and crinkly I don't really like the, the bags I did use a stamp on the front of them and I did take the pieces that I cut off at the end when I had the four pieces. There was some long pieces left over. And I just created some envelopes um, using those as well. So they're a little bit skinnier, but and they have a double edge. And there was no um, bottom flip up because they were already that long shape. So I just did some side folds. Uh, so I did use up all the scraps for making those little envelopes. And then whatever was left over in the little pieces, I just stamped with my stamp and made some labels. So they'll go in my sticky label box. I have been using these title pages that I pulled out of that book. I had about six pages and I did, um, oops, <laughs> I've got all these extra pieces. I did stamp some with this stamp and my black stays on to make some labels and I cut them all out. And then I did use my black, st st this stamp with the black and made a couple from another page and I've used my red. And now I'm just going to start and I'm going to do the first one on a scrap piece of paper because this will clean off my stamp. So I'm going to use this archival ink and this is the blue. And I'm just going to stamp it once or twice to get rid of the red color underneath or else it'll end up being purple. Okay, so that's done. And then all I do is, I'm going to turn it this sideways. And I, and I just stamp it and I'm going to remove that bottom piece. And I'm just going to stamp across the top. like that so I get 
five across the top like that. We have five there and then I'll put one on the side if I have enough room here like that and one on this side and then I'm going to do five across the bottom and I'll probably get five going across that way as well. So let's see. One, two, three, four, and I'll get another one in there. Five, one, oops, I mean, it's not a stamp pad there. Two, and the nice thing about this paper is it, it absorbs the ink really quickly because it's that thicker, what I call sketchbook paper. So it absorbs it very, very quickly. And then all I'm doing is cutting them out into strips. And I might put some of these stickers through my sticker machine so that they're already sticky so that when I grab them, I can just adhere them to the page rather than gluing them. Um, I do have a, a Xyron sticker machine so I will use that and create stickers with some of them. And then all I'm doing is I'm going around the outside of the sticker and leaving not even a sixteenth of an inch around the whole outside of the label. And it just gives it a nice finish. If I cut it right to the edge it looks kind of funny. So there I just do that and I'm, I'll just keep going with these. And I will do the second page as well with the blues. So I'll do this one as well and that will be and again I will probably go through my end pages, my end papers and some of those um, smaller thick ones that I can't really um, turn into book pages like these ones that are really thin and old. I will stamp these with the black, um, this one. And it will give me a really, really nice, here, let's do one of these. It will give me a really nice um, label because it's already aged and vintage looking. So I'll just do that. And you have to be very careful when using these stamps. This, um, this particular one, I find if I push down too hard in the middle, I get a little bit of the inside. Um, a little bit of a mark. So I find if I'm using though that one, I have to kind of, and I'm trying to explain it, I kind of push down on these two edges or the outer edges. So when I put it, push it down, I kind of do it this way. Try not to push down on the whole thing because it does leave that mark from the center. And it does for this one randomly. If I so I kind of just rock it back and forth and I might be able to get a third one. Let's see. I should have been paying more attention. No, I won't. So there is one of the older book pages and I'll get some of these really nice looking labels that I can use. And then if I want to, I can get, I have um, a stamp that says journal and I will um, stamp the center with the word journal and then the labels all ready to be put inside or put on one of my journals. So I just cut around the edges and then I get a nice vintage looking label. So save all those when you're ripping up your books or whatever and even if you're going through the book and it has like the title page in the middle of a chapter and it's white and it may have one or two words in the middle, save those ones because you can stamp around the words and use the paper itself. So that's what I will be doing. I'll be creating some more stamps, uh, labels, excuse me, uh, with those. And then one little project, I just, um, I have a little box here and I keep all my, what I call my sticky labels in there, all my labels. And I just took these out of the tin that they came in. And it's just a little tin. Um, I was going to put some watercolor pans in there, but it's a little too thin. I might have some that fit and I can glue them in um, with some hot glue because then you can pull them out. So what I'm going to do is just cover the front of this up. And I just took one of my planner pages from that Marjolaine Bastine day planner that my mom gave me. And I just cut a piece that will fit right over top of that. And I'm just going to glue that onto the top of the tin. 
And then I've got a pretty tin and it doesn't have the vintage label stickers and I can use it for watercolor paints or maybe some of those little um, crayons that I have, the watercolor crayons. Um, I might put some in there and then when I'm traveling, at least I have a little travel kit. And I will cover the bottom with just a scrap piece of, um, I'm gonna use cardstock because it will, it'll get roughed around when it's on a, a surface. So I'm just gonna grab a piece of cardstock, a nice colored piece of cardstock and put that on the bottom as well. Uh, but I'm gonna go ahead and glue that on and then I'll have a really pretty colored tin. So these are just some of the things as I throw my labels in, I came across the tin, so then I do that. So I'm just trying to use up, like say some of these planner pages on things and some of these end papers. So I just pull out piles of papers and go through them and sort them and then leave a pile on my desktop and that's my goal is to get rid of that pile by the end of the day. Um, later today I'm going to be doing some decoupaging of the music book pages so I'll try and add that in as well to the end of the video. So I am working on decoupaging my music book pages and this is just a little music book uh, that I got from a thrift store and it's a smaller one so I thought I would just do this one because the the napkin seemed to fit within the pages really well so I've got a quite a stack of napkins here and I'm going to work with this one I've already taken the white lining off the inside and cut this down to size and I'm just going to glue this onto the page and all I'm using is a little foam roller and some Elmer's all-purpose glue, I think it's called. And I just put a little bit of glue on my brush to get it wet. And then I'm literally just going to squeeze some glue onto the page, take my roller, and just roll the glue out onto the page a nice thin layer I don't want it to be really really thick because it hardens too much so I literally am just putting a thin layer of glue on the music book page like that and then I'm just taking my napkin and I'm literally setting it on the page like that, and then I roll from the inside, Oop, my finger is stuck to the page, out. So that's kind of what I'm working on right now. I've done a couple other pages and I'm going to show you those in a moment. I'm just going to show you how I really quickly, I'm going to grab another napkin. And I'm just going to pull the white part off. And sometimes they have one layer, sometimes they have two. This one only has one layer, so that's great. So pull the white off, like that. Now I'm just gonna set my roller here and I'm gonna flip my page. And it's still a bit wet, so I can't um, close the book up perfectly. And then I'm just going to take My scissors and I'm just eyeballing it and I'm just going to cut a little bit out like this there we go set that aside so that's about the size I need and then all I do is trim it a little bit smaller now sometimes the napkin will have a funny little line there where it has a I guess that's its printing line so I sometimes will cut that off. So we'll cut that off. Oops, let go of that one. So that fits better within the page. And then I'm just going to trim it back a little bit more. I'm going to take some of this edge off here. I don't want it to be exactly the same size as the page. I just want it to fit within the page. So we're just going to make it fit like right about there. And again, I'm just going to take my glue. I'm just going to move this guy out of the way here. Like that. I'm not piling a ton on. I'm just giving myself some 
start and then I just roll it out. where I want it on the page right there like that and then I'm going to take my napkin and I try and pull it nice and tight so that when I lay it down it doesn't crease or get any funny little bubbles in it and you don't lay it all the way down with your hand you just want to lay it down so that it catches it and I didn't I oh it's okay went up a little bit too high but that's all right and again you want to try and go from the inside out and it will um, get rid of any bubbles okay so there's another one done so I'm gonna let these two dry and I'll just flip through really quickly and show you I'm just gonna add my paintbrush there just so that it doesn't touch so I've done that one and then I had some tissue papers from Stamperia and I just cut the four pieces out, so I have those as well. And this is some tissue paper that I have. So I just tried a couple of different things to see how they looked. There's another napkin, and these are pretty much dry. I did these this morning. Um, this was another napkin that I got in, in a swap. Um, it had some gray f flowers in it as well, and I just cut the gray flowers out. And there's another of that tissue paper. There's another napkin and you can see the music paper when there's a white background you can really see that music paper so it's really kind of cool. This was another napkin that I had. It was a map and you can see the music paper a little bit behind it. There is one from Paris and again you can see that music paper behind it so it's good to start um, a collage with. If you just don't know what to put on, say, an envelope or something, and then there's another piece of tissue paper that I have. So all, all I'm going to do is go through my napkins um, and any tissue papers that I have, and I'm just going to do a quick fill up of some of these tissue papers and stuff that I have, and then they're done, and I have some in stock if I need um, something to collage with. So that will just sit on my shelf, and I can put... I'm, tear a page out as I need it. So I'm just going to set that there and then I'm just going to flip the page like that and there is my next page and I'm just going to see what other ones I have here that I have not tried. I've got these little bird nests. I've got this purple one. This one's got a little bit of a white background. Oh, and I've got this little birdie's nest. Let's try this guy. Again, this is just a little tiny one. So with this one, because it has four distinct um, layouts per napkin. Yeah. So what I might do with this one is actually just cut it into four. Ooh, there go. I kind of like how this guy's going on to the other page. And I don't mind, I don't want them upside down. So what I think I'm going to do is just kind of go straight up the page here. And again, it doesn't have to be exact, but I'm going to cut this guy off and around his tail. Like that. So I'll have that piece on the bottom and then I'm just going to do the exact same thing on the top. I'm just going to use another piece of this and put another piece up on the top so that I have two pieces that I can collage with. And I might even start with this side. Yeah, I think I'll do that and see if I can get this birdie in. Cut that off like that. And that one. So there, there's two little pieces that I can try. And I'm just going to, oops, I'm just going to cut that fold off because it's going to be a pain to, to work with. So again, I'm going to grab my glue. Now this one's going to fill the whole page, so I'll glue it just the top piece. And we'll work with the, just that top piece first. And I find this is the best way, you can use a glue stick, um, but I find this is a really good way because it really grabs the tissue paper really quickly. 
So I'm just gonna lay this guy down right here. Trying to make sure that that fold is flattened out a bit. So I'll pull this guy out and just roll that across there. There we go. So there's my top piece. Now let's do the bottom. So make sure I'm still on the screen here. Yep. All right, and then we're gonna roll this one out. It's great because it just gives me a nice thin layer of glue. And it doesn't even ripple the page all that much if I just use a thin layer of glue. And then we're gonna set this guy down. Like that. Right there. So there's two more I've got done. So we've got our butterfly, we've got our lovely pink flowers, and we have our, I think that one's a little drier, so I'm just going to leave that one there. That one there, let's open this up, and I'm going to do one more. It's just the edges that the glue, when I roll over the edge of the paper, the glue sticks a bit. And I think I'm just going to do this one, and maybe the um, lady with the purse, but that's, that's all I'm doing is just kind of making a little booklet. Well, and then again, I, it's ready for when, a project whenever I need it. And if you can't get an edge, the other way to get the white paper off, just grab a piece of tape, stick it to the napkin, and pull. And it pulls up just the white layer. A little strip of it. And you can just pull that off like that. Okay, now let's see. This one, hmm. again, I don't want anything upside down, so I'm gonna, because this has the pattern in the four sections, I'm going to cut across, go with my thing here like this. And just follow some of the flowers. There, so we've got that one. Like that. That's very pretty. And we'll just cut across here. And I save all these little pieces because you can use those for scrap um, when you're decoupaging something else. So maybe I'll move him up to the top and him on the bottom. And then the same thing. I'm just going to cut it across here like that. So I will start with the bottom this time. Put my glue on, roll it out, let go of me. So we'll start with the bottom piece. And whenever there's a fold, I try and leave that fold up in the air so that it I can push it down with my roller. Okay, so there's the bottom one. Again, and it's quick and simple. Um, yes, you can use a glue stick, but I find sometimes the glue stick doesn't hold after a while. Unless you have it. Oh, shoot, I'm using the wrong one again. I did that before. <laughs> See, when you're not paying attention. Uh, I use my, my roller here to... Alright, now let's put this guy on, and here, and I don't know if this roller is going to stick to my napkin or not, because it has glue on it, <laughs> it is a little bit. I'll go rinse that under the water and get rid of some of that. There. So there is another one of my napkins all done. So I'm just going to keep playing with this and finish it up and then um, then I'll do a little flip through of it at the end. I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there so that it'll grab that little corner like that. Perfect. And that's the decoupaging the music book papers. 
Okay, this is the final flip through of my decoupaged music book. Sorry for the shadow. Um, I, it's late at night and I'm just going to do a quick flip through. So these are some of the pages, some of the napkins that I had in my little bin that I'm trying to use up. So I've just gone ahead and collaged some of these music book pages. This is tissue paper. These are some more of my napkins. And I say these are great for collaging or decorating or doing snippets. These could be backgrounds and snippets. Um, so I've just gone ahead and, you know, used the second half of the napkin and finished pretty much the whole book. Just putting some napkins. These were pieces of that one napkin. There's pieces of, of one of the other ones. Um, I love this one. This one's just beautiful. And I love the music notes behind it. Oops, did I skip a page? Yes, and there's some more of that same napkin. Oops. Yeah, so that one, and then this is part of that napkin. And then these are some scraps of some of the others. And then this is another one that I had as well. So I've just gone ahead and, like I say, taken this little music notebook that I had um, that was in my ephemera stash and just decoupage. So now I can use these if I want to make some snippet pieces or something like that. I can actually just cut a little chunk out of that or tear a piece, tear a piece and that could be my background. That could be the beginning of a snippet roll. So that is decoupaging music book pages. This is the last project that I'm going to include in this video or is going to be very, very long. Um, so the other little thing that I've been doing at night when I'm watching TV is taking some of my little small floral pictures and just doing some fussy cutting with my little scissors. So I've got these nice little pictures of florals that I can use for some snippets and I, that might be my next project is doing some snippets. Um, I do have lots of little tiny things kind of set aside. Um, and the other thing that I was doing with some of these little pictures, if they were too detailed, um, and I don't think I have a sample, but if some of them were just like this one, maybe a little too um, detailed for me to cut around, I would just take my one and a half inch square punch and just kind of punch out a little part of that picture. And then I would take that little square and put it inside one of my postage stamps that I cut out. And again, I use those end book pages from the scrap pile that I have. I um, save any of the nice thick ones that are nice and aged, and this one was quite a nice color. Um, I use my postage stamp. This is a two inch square, and I will cut a whole bunch of these out, and I have quite a few of these in stock. Uh, whenever I get low, I just go ahead and punch. Let me just grab my little box here. I just punch a whole bunch of them and keep them in stock. And I have some craft colored ones and some white ones, um, but I'll use those and make these little tiny postage stamps as well with the ones that are a little too detailed for me to, to cut out. Um, so that's something else that I kind of do at the same time. I do my fussy cutting and then create the little postage stamps and then I keep a little box of those. And these are nice. You can add them to a collage. You can add them inside a book page, but you can also um, send them as a little... Uh, thank you gift to some of the people that purchase things or want to do a swap. I like to include some of the little postage stamps. So that's kind of the, I'm going to end the video with this project. Um, that will be the end of my, this week's um, video. And then as I work on some more projects, I'll just take little bits and pieces as I'm working on them and create a video and just make it into like a week long video of some of the little projects that I'm working on. So I hope you enjoyed um, the projects and I hope you got some great tips and tricks that you can use. And don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. We'll see you real soon. Bye for now.